Three, two, one, go. What's up, guys? So I have this cute little character that I made. I think it'd be an easy, not easy, but a, a simple character to do in 3D. And I think it'd be great for people that are just getting into it and want to do some character design work. So firstly, I'm just going to save this. I made it in Procreate. So I'm going to save it and then open Nomad. And we'll just start with a new scene. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this sphere and just start with a new sphere. So the first thing that I want to do is bring the image in. So we'll go here to reference image, import photos, and we'll import this little guy. So that's way too big. So let's go back into the import window and transform. So then we can shrink it and put it right here and then tap and then we're back to sculpting. And I think also I'm going to do Metcap. So I'm going to change from here from let PBR to Metcap. That way it's just easier to see, uh, easier to model with. All right. So so we have our sphere here, and we can probably make this shape uh, just by stretching this uh, sphere out. So to do something like that, first, you want to pay attention to this cube right here. We'll tap front because it's really important when we're using symmetry because we can make a lot of these shapes very easily, and we can do a lot of these things once rather than do them twice. And it's also just good for shaping. So let's start with his head here. So let's go to our symmetry window. And as you see, it doesn't come up because it's a primitive, which means that there's a few things that you can do to spheres. But right now you can't do anything until you validate it. So we'll just hit validate and then all these options will come up. So symmetry. One thing that I advise turning on is to go down to advanced and turn on show line. That way, you can always see where the symmetry line is. Uh, and, all, and anything that you do over here, let's see if we use a random tool and we go over there, the same thing happens over there. So that's the symmetry line. So the first thing we want to do is we can probably use move. And as long as we have symmetry tagged here, then we can start to pull this out and just sort of make this shape. So we'll go a little bit bigger. And then we can just start to pull it out. And just try to match the shape of this little guy's head. So I'm thinking maybe something like that looks pretty good. That's pretty good for the front of his head. And obviously we have uh, the back part. So for the back part, I'm just going to fill it out. I'll make the move a little bit longer so we don't uh, kind of alter the front shape, which we already have and we like. And I'm just maneuvering it around so that we properly extend the back of his head. Okay, so here's this. This is the back now. So that's the side view. That's the front. Um, you just always want to give them, you know, he deserves to have a back of his head too, not just not just the front. Now I'm just going to use move and go go back in and just adjust this front shape so that it's uh, 
you know, how we liked it before. Because sometimes when you use move, things can get a little, things can change a little bit. So just make sure that you're happy with the front. I think that's pretty good. And of course you can sort of puff out the sides as you wish. You know, depending on how round you, round you want the back of his head and all that stuff. I think that looks pretty good. Kind of looks like a Bluetooth speaker or something. So I think that's pretty good for his head. Another thing that I always do, we don't really have to do it here, but I like to smooth everything out afterwards. So I'll tap the smooth tool and I raise it pretty big and just kind of go over everything. Because sometimes it'll just smooth out, um, you know, by, by manipulating it. Sometimes you can just sort of create depressions and things like that. So I like to just keep everything nice and smooth. So next let's add these little ears. So we'll go into this window. We have our sphere that we just made. So we can tap the three dots and we can call that head. So this scene window, this pretty much will have everything that we need. Like anytime we add a shape, we want to add it here. For example, we go to add and sphere. Uh, and now there's a sphere, you can't actually see it, but you see our gizmo. Uh, I've made mine pretty small, but you can make it thick. Yours probably looks like this. I like it small, so I just low profile. But you can drag it up. And that's the sphere that we just um, brought in. So any shape that you bring in will be here. You can see it's yellow because we haven't validated it yet, but we can still call it ears. So for the ears, obviously he has two of them, so we want to mirror that. So we'll mirror it and notice this mirror. Now this ear is a, is a child to this mirror. Um, and this is a repeater. There's other ones. So these are here. So you can do array, curve, radial, mirror. Uh, and they essentially work the same way, uh, a very similar way. See, now when I move this like that, there's two of them and they're mirrored. And I don't want to get too much into the symmetry, but this, for example, is a local symmetry line because it's local to this sphere. But these two shapes, we mirrored, and now there's two of them. Uh, it's mirroring off of the very center of the pro of the project. So this is the world center. This is the local center of this sphere, but the world center is what this is mirroring. Um, and you'll notice that there's places that world and local will be more, uh, you'll need to know the difference, but I don't want to get too much into it because it can be kind of confusing. I'll make my widget a little bit thicker and a little bit bigger so you can see. So there's a lot of stuff on this gizmo. That's what this is called. We can go ahead and validate these. So this is the gizmo and obviously the arrow moves it, you know, in the direction. The orange ring, bigger and smaller. And then you have these spheres, and that can stretch and pull. Uh, and you can play around with the other ones too. They have other, other functions that I never actually use. So we just want to make the shape of this, which is sort of like, looks like if you were to pull it, maybe make it a little smaller. So it, it looks pretty much like, like that. Pretty close to this shape. So now we just kind of sort of place it where it is. Oh, and also these rings here. See this blue ring and this red ring? So that just rotates it as well. So that's what those are. So I'll turn it to the side. And it looks like they're sort of in the back of his head. They're down pretty far. And they're rotated. So kind of like that. And I don't think they would be this, uh, 
this round. I actually like the roundness, but I think we might want to, let's look at the top view. I think we want to, might want to make it more flat on the front view, so this part is flat. So there's a few ways to do everything with uh, 3D modeling, I've noticed. So there's a flatten tool where you can just flatten. Oops. You know where you can flatten it out. So that's one way to do it. Not a, not a bad way. But then you could also trim. There's also the trim tool. So you can choose the trim tool. I like to go here and I like to just put those at nothing. And then you can choose different options here. You can trim in a line, kind of like that. You can trim in a shape, circle. So you, you kind of get the idea. But if we want these to be sort of flat, we would probably use the rectangle. And you could sort of trim them like this, you know, that kind of thing, which actually looks pretty good. But the only difference, the only thing I wanted to do is See how we have this little shape here? So we can either make that a depression in, in the ear, or we can make it like, I don't know what the opposite would be, kind of coming out. So, so we have our ears here. I'm gonna tap on mirror and validate. Now we just have both shapes. So I'll name this ear, and I'll go here and clone it. So now we have two, and I'll show you why that's important. Let's hide it for now. And let's spin this to the top and let's trim the ears using rectangle. Oops. Uh, what did I do? Oh, okay, I must not have. Okay, so let's trim the rec trim, trim the ears. Maybe like that. But that's also uh, voxel remesh these because you can see they're a little, they're not that great. And there's two things we can do. We can voxel remesh, but first I'm gonna use the rounded all brush. So this tool, you can take your smooth tool, tap it and hit clone. You can name it round edge. I'll just put RE for now. And then for your round edge brush, you can go to the little pencil and you can set this fall off to flat. And then go down to stroke type, grab dynamic radius, and then go over to pressure, uncheck, preset, preset, and then make both of these flat. And now you have a rounded edge tool. So you can go into this tool, tap it, and hit save. And now you have a rounded edge tool. So with rounded edge, you can tap on your ears and you can go like that. But you see some weird things happening. So let's voxel remesh it. So actually, I'm not going to do it down there because you probably won't have it there. I'm going to go up here, voxel, and then remesh. I want to put it to 200. That looks better. So with rounded edge, I'm now just going to drag a couple times, like so. Maybe a few more. So it rounds everything out, makes it nice and smooth. So now we also have this other ear. So let's bring that back. Ear one. And let's actually make it a child of this ear because they'll be together. So now with this ear, let's take our gizmo and let's shrink it like that, and now let's move it. Let's tap symmetry first, and now we can move it sort of like 
uh, we could before we validated it. So I think we want to make it smaller. Maybe we'll, let's see, what's the best way to do it? Maybe we'll skinny it up this way and then move it to the middle and then we can rotate it until we get what we want. a little bit more. It's a little tricky. Maybe something like that. I feel like I like it smaller like that. So there's a, there is another option too. If that gets really confusing, um, we can do something a little bit easier. So we can take the ear, clone it, and then we go to Gizmo, and we can actually uh, go to Snap, and 90 is good. You can change that number and it'll turn in those increments, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. And we can bring them close to one another, and we can kind of do the same thing, we can kind of shrink them uh, as you see, like it, we still run into the same problem, but hopefully it's a little easier to understand. We still have to hit symmetry, so let's see, hopefully this is a bit easier. It's a little bit easier, we don't really have to rotate it that much for it to look good. Because once you rotate it, oops, make sure that you're off of snap. Now you can kind of rotate freely. So it's sort of the same issue that we had before. Um, but yeah, you just have to move it a little bit and just kind of get it to where you want it to want it to go. I think that's pretty good. Okay, let's see if I can take both of them and so I probably can't, unfortunately, if you take two things, you can't uh, open them up like we had. In order to do that, we would need to have them both separate. Only because I feel like I might want it a little bit more like this. So then I have to rotate this one as well a little bit. Sometimes you gotta, you know, you have to make it, you have to be happy with what you're doing. So sometimes it, sometimes you have to kind of go back and being no, be annoying with yourself. All right, so let's make his little body. So for his little body, we could use a, there's a few things that we could use. We could use a, a circle, but I think I might use a box. So with the box, we'll just bring it down. You see these other options with, um, on the gizmo now? Those can sort of get in the way sometimes, so just tap edit and those will go away. Uh, they just give a, a greater amount of control for the box, but we're not doing anything too crazy, so we don't really need it too much. So let's skinny it up that way. Maybe make it a little wider. But we want the edges to be nice and soft, so let's validate it. We'll take our rounded edge and we can round this out and we can if we feel like the edges aren't sufficiently round just go to voxel so just go to voxel again and bring it down lower to maybe like 60 remesh and then you can hit it with your rounded brush Okay, I think that's pretty good. We could make the bottom a little bit more round. That's the only thing that I notice. So we can use smooth, just the regular smooth tool. So we already have this, uh, this line, this symmetry line. So anything we do here is gonna happen here. But we also want anything we do on the front to happen in the back. So for that, we're gonna Go to the symmetry option, and we have red, but let's take blue as well. 
to Z. So now you see this line here. So anything that happens in the front will happen on the reverse side. So we'll take smooth. And let's just smooth out the bottom part. But what's important is, like what I just did, um, is you have to make sure that you hit symmetry or else it won't work. And you'll have to go back and do it again. It happens to me all the time. So now I'm just rounding out that bottom edge. And making it a little a little more like the like the drawing. I think that's pretty good. So now we have a nice round bottom edge. Okay, so now we can sort of just kind of just fit it in here. I think it would be a little bit thinner. And it looks like it goes right into his little body. So we can make the whole thing smaller and maybe we can stretch it and then bring it right into his little head. We well, actually has a big head. So maybe something like that. Be a little bit wider. Okay, so let's make his little legs. But let's make sure that we name these things too. Body. The ears. Ears we can just connect. So we have head, ears, and the body. So let's tap on body and then we'll hit plus. And for the legs, I think we can just do spheres for the legs. So we'll bring them down, or bring it down, mirror, and then separate. I know it looks crazy right now. We'll use the orange ring to shrink it down. And we kind of bring them together a little bit. And then we can sort of stretch them out. Maybe we'll even rotate them a little bit. So here's one thing. So I rotated them, but let's say I still want to move directly left and right and not uh, on this angle. You can tap world. And now it's moving everything. Now the gizmo was set for the whole project. So we can still go uh, right and left. It's a little bit easier now. Stretch them out a little bit more. So maybe something like this. And I'm also noticing his, his belly is a little more round. So let's take move and run this again. So we have the uh, everything that ha is happening in the front is happening in the back. That's what those lines help me, so I know that the symmetry is on. Symmetry is checked. So I just want to move out his belly a little bit. I'm going to make the move tool big. That way the, the it bends nice and smoothly. There we go. I think that I think that works. I think that's pretty good for now. Okay, so for the legs. So you notice that the bottoms are, they're pretty flat right now. But obviously, if he's like a character, he's going to be standing on the ground. So let's add, let's add a cylinder for now. And that cylinder we can bring we can bring straight down, and we can use the tools to flatten it up. And just give him a little a little platform like this. So then we can sort of see where we want his feet to go. 
I think something like that is perfect. So we'll just validate our sphere and let's call that, uh, see the cylinder actually went into the mirror so we have to just take it out. So just long press it and take it out. Otherwise it'll be mirrored like the, like the legs. So for the cylinder, let's just name that full uh, ground, just so we know. And this mirror, let's name this mirror legs. Okay. So the only thing with the legs is in the drawing, they're sort of, they're a little bit more straight. So I'm going to go ahead and validate the legs. That way we can sort of edit them. And I'm not going to turn symmetry on because right now they're still instanced with each other. So anything I do to one will happen to the other. Uh, if I use symmetry, it's not going to be right because it's still going to be on the local symmetry. So it's okay, but um, we don't really need it right now. So we're using move. We're on the legs. And I just want to sort of stretch this out a little bit on the sides so the legs are a little straighter. So that's all. Maybe we should give him a little butt, too. I don't think that would be too difficult. Let's give him a little butt. So the legs, uh, I like the legs. Um, but before we validate this leg thing, let's actually make some little toes. We'll do the little toes, then we'll do the little butt. Okay. So let's add another sphere. And notice I'm on legs. So when we add another primitive, it's going to go in the, and in there instead of having to put it in there. So now we add another sphere. Uh, this sphere is right here. And let's label this feet. So we'll bring it down. And it's already mirrored, even though we don't have mirror here, because it's inside the other mirror for the legs. So that can be a bit confusing, but um, the short of it is just, just know that if something is inside one of those um, one of the red words, the red, uh, then just know that the same rules are going to apply, whether you want them to or not, unfortunately. Okay, I think that's good. So now he has his little feeties, let's validate. And so we can take the spheres and the feeties. And we can actually join them together. So now they're joined. And now let's take all of these and validate and join children. So this is going to make them all one shape. If we wanted to keep the legs and the and the little toes separate, we could do keep instances or uninstance. Keep instances means they're separate, but anything we do to one will still happen to the other one. Uninstance means they would be separate and they're not connected at all. So we could make one really big and nothing would happen to the other one. So we want to join children and we'll just make it all one shape. So now we have our legs. So let's do a little tush. So we'll do a circle. We'll bring it down. Let's mirror it. Let's move it to the back. Could give them a tail too or something. So now once you separate them, then you start to see. The shape, so we'll make something like this. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So now he's a little a little rumpus. So we'll validate that. And we can go ahead and validate this too. Join children. So we'll name this uh, Bunda. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so let's add his little arms. So go back here, add, and let's. Mm, do we want to? No, we'll use a we we'll use a sphere. So we'll use another sphere here. And for this sphere, 
I'm actually going to bring it up because we're going to do some some cool stuff with the sphere first. So we're going to, let's validate it. And so we want to make his arm, but the arm is sort of, uh, we wanted to start out a little bit smaller up here and then kind of get rounder. But for now, we just want to, there's a few ways to do it. We could use tube, but I think it's good that we just stick with the sphere for now. So I want to stretch this because when you stretch it this way, the ends aren't really round like the initial thing is. But you can go to symmetry and I think it's the blue one. Let's see. Or it might be the green. See how the green hour is pointing up? So let's go back to symmetry and just tap the green plane. So now we'll tap symmetry here. And if we drag it, It'll stretch out like that. So that's a little bit more what I'm looking for. So let's remesh this. Let's go to here, voxel. And let's remesh it at like 200. And let's just smooth it out a little bit. You can use round all, or you can just smooth it manually. Okay, so let's use our gizmo. We want to turn symmetry off now. And we want to sort of just, you can shrink it and just sort of put it into place. And I want to put it more towards the back. Okay, that's actually pretty good. So I think this is actually looking pretty decent. So the only thing that I'm seeing for our arm is that this is very straight, whereas this one is kind of rounded. So let's use move. We'll make it really big. Because when you when you have when you make move really big, then you can um, then you, it'll sort of bend the whole shape. Okay, so we don't have symmetry on, so we don't have to worry about that green line. But we'll just sort of push it and it'll start to bend. Like that. And now we can use our gizmo to drag it back in place. So now it has a nice bend. And of course you can take move, you can make it a little bit smaller, uh, and you can manipulate it a little bit more just by moving it. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Now let's deal with the back of his, the back of his back, which is looking crazy. So remember here we have all those different symmetry lines. So um, it looks like the blue, we can take the blue off uh, and just deal with the red. That way it's left and right. So we just want to deal with the back and left and right. So now we can just kind of smooth can either try to smooth it to get it into a better place. Uh, you could use flatten too. You could flatten it and try to get it to a better shape. Or you could just use uh, the move tool as well. And you could sort of just move it in to a better place. Maybe it's a little, maybe it's got a little bend in the back. And maybe it comes up a little bit more on his head. Something like that. Then you can take your round all and just kind of round it out. And make it nice and smooth. Okay, so for the arm, uh, we want to add another mirror. So right now it's a sphere. We can rename it arm, even though we'll probably have to rename it again. So now we'll make sure that we're on arm and we'll tap add, and then we can add a mirror here. So then it mirrors it. 
again, it's mirroring from the very center. And that's why I've kept my model in the center because we can use that world symmetry. Okay, so let's, I'm gonna call the mirror arms as well. All right, so let's see, what do we wanna do next? It's looking pretty good, I'm very happy with it. The body maybe is a little bit big, perhaps. You can use drag too. Drag is a little more, it's kind of like move, but it'll move like less of the whole entire shape. Let's just smooth out the bottom here. I kind of want to give him a little bit more of a belly, too. I feel like that might look kind of cute. So let's use move and let's kind of drag the top of the head back a little bit. So we'll move that back a bit. Maybe we'll just kind of give him a little bit more of a belly. And now we can actually bring the arms back a little bit more. There we go. Sorry, I can't help it but to like do all these like extra details. It's just, it's in my nature. All right, so let's add this little pineapple. Let's save. We'll just name him Little for now, because he's little. So let's make the pineapple. So that looks like, it actually almost looks like the arm very similar to the arm. Um, I'm just gonna make it on the top. I'm gonna tap head and then add a sphere. So I think I'm gonna use a sphere and I might use a cylinder as well. So let's add a cylinder as well. So we'll bring them both up And let's clone the sphere. And let's put the cylinder in between. So this will all be our, our pineapple. So let's take the bottom sphere and lower it. And let's flatten it and this, let's make this the bottom of our pineapple. Okay, so maybe something like that. So now the cylinder, let's tap uh, edit and then radius. So these orange things, that just gives us more control over how we edit our cylinder. So let's take this and just open it up so that it's a wider shape. And let's take the, uh, the sphere and let's try to match that. So we want it to be sort of flat, but let's try to match it. Maybe something like this. And let's take the top and let's flatten it as well. Maybe we'll bring it down some. And we'll flatten it a little bit too. I think that looks pretty good. I mean, it's kind of like a, um, a, uh, what do you call it? Pineapple, sort of. <laughs> but I kind of like it. So let's validate. Um, you can validate them or you can just take them all and we'll voxel remesh them all together. So we'll go to voxel, and I think 250 is good. So we'll voxel merge, now they're all together, and you can take rounded edge, and then you can just kind of round them out. 
You can take smooth too. If you, if you like a more aggressive smooth. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so now we have the the base of our pineapple and we just have to make these, you know, the little plant parts for our pineapple. It'd be kind of cool to make all the little uh all the little parts too, but I'm not sure if that'll be too much. But for now, we'll stick to these little the little plant pieces. So in order to do that, we'll use a ray, which is really, really fun. So let's just name this pineapple. And let's add, um, let's add another cylinder I think will work. Okay, so we have to make this cylinder into like a sort of pineapple leaf shape. So I think something like that will work. We'll flatten it up. And one side is definitely pointy on pineapples. So I think this is good for now. Let's validate it. And um, before I use rounded edge, I'm just gonna, I want to stretch out. I want to make the one end sharp. So we want to use red, but we also we also want to use. Uh, I think it's going to be green symmetry. There we go. So we want to use green because we want top and bottom and left and right. We don't want blue. That would be this end and this end. This one I, want, I just want to keep flat. So now we'll use move really small, make sure symmetry's on, and then you can just stretch this out and just kind of make it flat, or make it sharp, I mean. Might have to make a uh, move a little bit bigger. I think that's good. So now I'm going to use rounded edge and just kind of round it out a little bit. I think that's good. And the only other thing that I want to do with this, I'm going to make sure that I take it uh, off of the green. And I want to make move a lot bigger. And I think I just want to give this a little bit of a, of a bend. So once I have my move tool nice and big, I'm just going to push on the under part. just give it a nice bend like that. And another thing you can do is we can take crease. Let's turn symmetry off. So we can take crease and you can draw a crease down the middle. Like so. So I think this is pretty good. So now what we need to do is uh, we want to make we want to make an array. So we'll make sure we're on our leaf. Let's rename this um, pine leaf. And then we're going to add an array the same way we added the mirror. So we go to add, and then oh, not array. I always say array. A radial. We want to add a radial. And you can see it's already looking crazy because now there's four of them. So this, these options up here, uh, they're, they're the radial options. See radial, and here's our pine leaf. So anything under this, under this radial is gonna be affected by this radial. And these are the radial options. Now there's three, now there's two. So that's why, that's what that is. It's a little bit hard to see what's going on, so you wanna tap on the pine leaf and the gizmo. You, want to open, you can bring them away from each other. But notice now the sharp part is pointing the wrong way. So I'm going to go the opposite way. 
So here we go. So now our leaves are, we have something like this. And again, you can go back to the radial for the radial options. And you can add another one, something like that. I don't know how many a pineapple actually has. So I think this will have to, this will have to do. Um, and it's up to you if you want to get rid of this. You can separate them a little bit more to get, excuse me, to get rid of that bottom, that bottom part. Doesn't really bother me that much though. Okay, so I'm gonna take the pine leaf and just bring it down to our pineapple. We'll make it smaller. You can see as you make it smaller, they sort of move away from each other. So you just have to move them back. Maybe I want to stretch them out a little bit. Yeah, I kind of like that. Give them a little stretch. Okay, and you can also you can also kind of bend them a little bit too. So you just have to figure out what you like, what your aesthetic is. I think that looks decent. I, I should look at a pineapple. Let's take a quick look. Oh, so they're all pointed up. And they get smaller. Oh. Interesting. So they're all pointed up, and they're kind of small at the bottom. Okay. So let's see if we can do that real quick. Sometimes I give more work for myself. Oh, you know what? That actually does look a ton better. <laughs> I like that. So all I did was bend it. All I did was take it and bend it like this with the curve, but that looks good. So now we have, um, we have this radial and let's say we want to make three or four of them. I'm going to take the whole, I'm going to take all of this and I'm going to clone it. So now we have two. So I'll take the top one. go to the pine leaf and then I'll move it up and maybe we'll just rotate it. Whoops. Okay. So note to self, you can't rotate. I think if we go to the radial, we should be able to rotate everything. Let's see. No. Okay. So it's going to rotate it now. No. Okay, so let's um, validate this, and we'll do join children. And now we can rotate it. Pivot, reset, pivot. Sometimes the pivot uh, is at the bottom. So now we can sort of rotate it. And I think that looks good. But I probably should have, uh, before I before I validated it, I should have done this. I should have done that. And stretch it up a little bit. I kind of like it when it turns like that, but that's okay. Okay, so now I'll validate these. And now we can rotate it. Pivot, reset, pivot. And now we can rotate it a little bit. So I'm going to take the original one and I'm going to clone that again. And I'll bring this above. And the reason why I'm bringing it above is so I don't get confused. This is the middle one. This is the bottom one. And this is the top one. But you can't see it because we haven't moved it yet. So the bottom one will move back up. We'll rotate it inwards. And maybe we'll stretch it a little bit more like that. Yeah. 
So we just need to, I just needed to figure out a way to sort of um, get them so they're not really going into each other as much. So I just have to kind of maneuver them. I think that looks pretty good. I don't think I need much more than that for a pineapple. Okay, so now I'm going to take these and validate them. And I'll take the bottom one and validate it too. So the top one, I think I just might want to... Actually, I don't, need, I don't really need to twist it. I was going to turn it, but it looks like it's in a good spot. All right. And I'm just going to join these together. And these are going to be our pine pineapple stem. Okay, so I think our pineapple is looking pretty good. It might be a little a little tall, so I'll just shrink it up a little bit and then move it up. Okay, I think that's pretty good. And if you if you want to um, make the bottom a little rounder, you can also go to your voxel. Where is it? Go to voxel and bring it down really low. Remesh it, and then you can smooth you can smooth the bottom or the top and the top. You can kind of smooth it out a little bit more. Okay. And it would be kind of cool to make these little these little parts. So I think we can just use cylinders for that. And since we just did these, um, you should be a whiz at arrays. So let's add a cylinder. Oops. So we'll add a cylinder. We'll shrink it. And I'm going to put it in its place. That sounded weird. So I'm going to bring it up to about here. Bend it. I think something like this. So now, see now it's on world so I can move it in and out. But if I want to stretch it this way, then I go off of world. And this is the local symmetry. So I can stretch it if I want a little bit that way. So, so now we have something like that. So now we just need to add a radial to this cylinder. There we go. You can add a bunch of them if you want. Maybe we want to make them a little bit bigger and add less. Just go back to radial and bring it down some. And maybe we want to tilt it, tilt them down a little bit. So that's kind of cool. So maybe we'll just do like a couple rows like this. So we'll take this, we'll clone it. Let's bring, let's bring this one up. So I'm gonna tap cylinder and I'm gonna tap world so I can just move it straight up. And maybe bring it in a little, maybe, bring, maybe make it a little smaller. Maybe we don't want as many, or maybe we just might make them smaller. Like that. Maybe we'll do another row like this, so we'll clone. We'll go to the cylinder, we'll bring it up. We'll make it smaller, even smaller. And we'll move it in. Oh, it's interesting that it's not completely straight. Very interesting. 
makes me wonder if I go to move origin and then bring it up. Oh, it reset it back to a, interesting. I wonder if I go to move origin. So if I go here, move origin, sometimes it'll move it to the directly the center. Oh, it, hmm. that's weird. Well, anyway, I find it interesting that the back isn't as, uh, is not, they're not equal, but we can fix that later. So I think that looks pretty good. And we, I'm going to go back to this one so we can just clone this. Clone. We'll go to the cylinder, drag it down. Sorry for the loud noises. People literally just like walk around back and forth upstairs all the time. Okay, so let's clone this. the cylinder and then we'll so this one I think can get a little bit smaller Maybe a little bit smaller and a little bit wider like that maybe we'll make one more so we'll clone this one we'll go to the cylinder and then maybe this will be our last one We'll make it really small, but maybe kind of wide. Sort of like that. Okay. So now let's go ahead and validate all these and we'll join children. So now we have these things. So now we can sort of, if we need to adjust, like for example, we can tap on the bottom ones, pivot, reset, pivot. Hey, I don't know, I don't know why the pivot always moves um, somewhere where we don't need it. So that's, that's kind of annoying, but that, I guess you kind of get used to pivot, reset, pivot, at least I do. Pivot, reset, pivot. Pivot, reset, pivot. Pivot, reset, pivot. Sometimes I when I once I realize that I'm repeating things over and over again, I get kind of embarrassed at myself. <laughs> Not gonna lie. I think that's an interesting looking pineapple. So, um, and actually, you know what else we could do? If you really want like extra credit, uh, firstly, let, we should we probably should have done this in the beginning. Let's take each radius. So let's take the top one first, and let's just run it over with our rounded edge brush. And let's do that with each one a few times. And then let's decimate them. So we'll just start at the one where we're at. Decimate. And we'll bring them all down to, let's see. Hmm. We'll just decimate them a little bit. One, two, we'll just decimate them twice. One, two. One, two. I'm not paying that much attention to, to the size, but it is kind of important. So there's another thing that we can do. We can take all of these and we can hit clone. And we can actually do like, we can actually make it, make it a little more pineapple
At least I think this is, it feels a little bit more pineapple-y, right? Is it pine cone -y? <laughs> It might be more like a pine cone, but it's fun. I'm enjoying it regardless. Make another one up here too. Now the only problem is I don't think I can, oh yeah, I can kind of cheat it if I just go like that, I can cheat it a little bit. It's the weirdest looking pineapple. Well, the front looks good. These look a little bit messed up. I think I might have messed those up a little bit. Um, but I think that I think they're okay. All right, so let's take all of these radials and let's uh, join them. So we'll join them all. And I'll link them to the pineapple. I kind of like it. Not sure on the coloring yet. So now the pineapple, let's move it into place. So I have them both selected. And we'll just use our gizmo. Okay, pineapple stem. There we go. So let's put this into the pineapple as well. So now we can move all of them. sort of put it into place. We don't want that really going into his face because that would look kind of painful. It's okay if that kind of goes into his body because it's going to be like against his body so that's kind of all right. We actually do need it a little closer. How big is it to our, maybe it's a little smaller. And we'll bring it a little closer to his body. A little more forward. So this is basically just maneuvering, you know, to where you like it. He has it kind of in front of him. Maybe we'll make it a little lower. I think that works. It doesn't really work on this angle though. I don't think the vacuuming could get any louder upstairs. <laughs> okay, so this is when we, you kind of have to make it work for the actual model that you have in front of you. Because sometimes the 2D just doesn't, you can't really do it. It won't really look right. I think that looks okay for the, for this. So let's take the arm. And we want to just use this. We want to just adjust, just adjust this arm. So now we'd, we'll select both of those and we'll validate, but we want to uninstance. Yes. So here we have, now we have our, both of our arms are separate. And we want to be like, he's holding that. 
So the tube tool, tube tool will be easiest, but we're just going to manipulate his arm using move. So first you make our move tool nice and big, make sure that you're on his arm. And we want to push the arm out to get that bend in it. Looks funny, but it's okay because it's going to be against the pineapple. I wonder if we can reset the pivot. There we go. So I just reset the pivot, and now the pivot's in the middle of his arm. So now I'm just adjusting it so that it's like he's holding the pineapple. So kind of like that. You can use move if you think the hand is a little bit too on top of it. You can just kind of move it out a little bit like that. Let's move it up some. So something like that. And then we want to take some, there's a few different things we can do now. Maybe we'll just use inflate. Inflate's one of my favorite tools. So we'll just use inflate and we can use that to kind of make his little fingers. So we make one, two, three, actually I don't know how many fingers we want him to have, but something like that. And maybe we want an extra finger here. The only tricky part is you really have to, you don't want the finger to be kind of sticking up in the air too much. So when you do your inflate, you just have to make sure it's kind of low. That was a terrible inflate, but we can use smooth and hopefully the smooth will, smooth will kind of make them look a little more round and cute. I think that worked. And we also want to adjust the top part of his arm so that it just continues to look like it's just going into his body. I think that looks pretty good. And for this arm, if we want to add the fingers, since the other side has fingers, um, let's get rid of this real quick, the, uh, the cylinder. So let's tap it and then just have hide or the ground. So we'll hide it. So we might be able to just use inflate again. So we'll make sure we're on this arm. We might be able to just use inflate again. to kind of give him some fingers. So we'll just smooth and really I'm just, this are just like, no, they don't really look good. So if we really want to give him proper fingers, we have to make a palm. So we'll use flatten. And we want to flatten. So he has like a palm. And then we can just kind of smooth it out some. So we want to give him a palm. And then we can either, we can try inflate again or either that, or we'll have to just add some little cylinders.
I mean, that looks kind of cute. You might have to work on those, like, um, and just get a little more comfortable and, uh, and actually kind of loose with it. You know, you can't think too much about it. The, the big thing is that you want to palm so that the, you know, because if you look at our hands, you know, we have the palm and that's where our fingers sort of come off from. So palm was the important part for me. And you can even take flatten and you can sort of flatten out the inside too, if you want for a little extra. Just a little something extra, you know? Oh, and that also reminds me of this bottom part. Okay, so now let's bring back the ground. So this bottom part, um, the legs, let's go ahead and voxel remesh that. I think 200 is fine. And let's also trim the bottom. So we'll do left. And we'll use trim. And we want to use the rectangle. And I can't believe I'm not in orthographic. Um, I usually sculpt in orthographic, but I guess I wasn't. But that's fine. So orthographic is just better for um, trimming things like this. So we can just see it very straight instead of uh, perspective. But for what we're doing, and it was, luckily it wasn't really that big of a deal. That's why I never noticed it. So we can go to orthographic so we can see perfectly straight. And then we just want to trim a little below what we have like that. So that way when we hide this again, that will be fairly straight. I'm going to use rounded edge and I'm just going to round the legs. Uh oh. So what happened was, what had happened was, uh, this needs to be a little bit more solid, the legs. So anyway, let me save. So I'm going to voxel remesh at like 400. And you see that kind of like helped, but it made the number really big. So now I'm going to use my rounded edge. And I'm going to, you know what? I do want to, um, I'm just trying to think if I want to add all the parts together. His butt, his legs, and his body. And the head. This might be a good time to do all of that. Um, so yeah, I think maybe... Let's add, let's put together the bunda and the body and the legs. So let's voxel remesh them together. I'm gonna do it 400. And now I'm gonna do rounded edge. Bunch of times to get it nice and smooth. I'll use the regular smooth brush to do some more. Oh, I don't know what that is. I wonder what that came from. Okay, I think that looks good. And we didn't do the head, did we? I guess we didn't. That's all right. So now for the top, let's put together the ears. Oh, actually, let's do the face. We might as well do the face since we're doing so well. All right, so for the face, let's use crease. And I usually do this as a little cheat for myself. So we want to make the eyes. So the eyes are a little bit above the halfway point. Well, so I think they're about here. And make sure that you have symmetry on. That way, anything that we do over there. Oh, you know what? 
this is way too we need to we need to add more to this so first let's go here multi-res subdivide so I'll subdivide it twice and then I'll go to voxel and I'm going to voxel remesh it at 400 Okay, so now it's voxel remeshed at 400. So now the crease is much better because it's just denser. So let's add the parts for the eyes. So we want to make sure we're a little bit away from this line and we're going to do a curve like this. So something like this kind of comes down like that. And it comes over. It's kind of straight like that. I think that's pretty decent because we can continue to make changes as we go along. So let's use clay sub. We can raise that up a little bit. And then we're just going to whittle away inside our eye template that we made with the crease tool. Okay. I think that looks pretty good. And also here's a good time to sort of adjust this. So you can use move or drag and you can sort of adjust this out. I just think I want them a little bit bigger. I want a little more space between the eyes. And the top is a little, yeah, a little bit pointier like that. There we go. I think I like that. So now we'll just smooth it out. good smooth the only other thing that I'm thinking of is I I didn't really think about if I want the face to be coming out a little bit so you can sort of experiment with that by using move and just sort of bringing out the face a little bit seeing how that looks okay just to give a little bit, a little bit extra to his face. And his, his eyes are actually lower in the drawing, so I'm not sure if I want to, <laughs> if I want to try to make them lower or if I'm okay with them like this. I could always make the head bigger too. That is an option. I could always take the head and just kind of make it bigger up here. But anyway, just showing you how I would do different things. So now let's add some eyes. So we'll add sphere. We'll bring it forward, mirror. And now we can just, oops, we can adjust these. Or just add them in there. Okay, so I don't think that we'll be able to get the eyes to fit perfectly in there without really manipulating them. Let's see, if we make them really big, we could possibly, could possibly do it. Let 
And then we could possibly just um, carve them. Yeah, it's a little tough. It's a little tough to do it that way. So I think it'll be easier to just uh, to just manipulate them so that they fit. And that's okay. So let's validate and let's use the move tool. And we'll just sort of move the eyes so that they fit nicely in our scene or in our designated eye area. So something like this. Let's use drag. Just want to drag this part out a little bit more. So something like that. I think that looks good. All right. And we also can add an inflate. If we wanted to add some inflation, make sure that your symmetry is on. And you can go like this. And then you can just flatten it out and make it a little more a little sm more smooth. Or not flatten it out, smooth it out. So that gives a little bit more, you know, top to the eye. All right, so now let's add uh, an eye, some eyelashes. And I like to use the tube for that. So we'll do path. So we're using tube, path. Uh, we can turn the spline off later. I like to use snap. So we'll start here, and you have to drag until that until that shows up. Then you can take the apple pencil off, and then you just repeat. So just drag, up, drag. And you can drag them into each other if you need to get rid of one. And you tap it to make it more of a harder uh, edge, or angle, I should say. So then you tap this to bring that into existence. And of course, we're going to mirror it. And then you can tap on it and then pr uh, hit edit. So we'll get those nodes. And the first one just makes the whole thing bigger or smaller. That's the first radius. Tap radius again, and then both edges are separate. And then tap it again, and you can adjust each one of the nodes. I do radial twice, because I like to make this end bigger. And this end smaller. And then I like to do spline, makes it nice and curvy. And I'm going to adjust this a little bit to get this like out of the... So something like that. Bring that in. And I'm just going to make this a little more, a little more round. So something like that. So we can validate, and I like to smooth the ends, like this. And then I like to take flatten and like kind of give it a nice uh, little turned up look. So something like that. And then I just like to smooth it all out a little bit. Okay, so now let's add these little bits. 
and those are really simple. So this, these are going to be, we can validate those and we can join children. These are the lashes. This, these are the eyes. So I'm just going to rename this mirror eyes. I'm not going to, I'm not going to validate the eyes yet. Okay, so, oh. So let's add sphere, mirror, and I just like to make the little eye dots. That's what I call them. Yep, so there's something like this. Make them small. And maybe I'll make them a little bit higher up. Okay, so maybe something like that. Uh, I'll go ahead and validate them. And then I'll take drag and just drag out the bottom like so. Give them a nice smoothing. And I think that's actually pretty good. If I want to make them flat, I could always just make them flatter with the flatten tool. You just got to go easy on them. Just do it nice and delicately. Maybe the bottom is a little sharp. I want it to be a little more round. And a little more flat. Okay, there we go. So let's make sure that we uh, validate these, join children, and name it. Because you will definitely forget what that is. I dots. All right. So let me have his little, his little mouth. So for his little mouth, we could do... We could do a sphere, and remember how we did that, um, that stretch. So if we validate this, and then we tap symmetry, let's see, we already have the red, so let's see if it'll stretch. There we go. So we can stretch that to a mouthish size, and we could even, um, if we take symmetry off, we could even kind of bring it in to make sure that we have the decent size for it. Let's do pivot, reset, pivot. That resets the pivot to the middle. That way when we make it smaller, it still remains in the middle. So it's just a very small little smile. Mouth is kind of about here, maybe even a little bit smaller. And then we just want to give like a little bend to it. So let's use move big again. And we'll just sort of push it down. Oh, it's pushing really weirdly. Let's see. Symmetry is not on. Yeah, sometimes it pushes a, a bit strange. So let's voxel remesh it at like 150. Now let's see if that helps at all. <clears throat> That's much better. So let's drag it down a little bit because he has a very small smile. Pivot, reset, pivot. Resets the pivot back to the middle. And maybe it's a little too, there we go. Let's flatten it up a little bit. Ooh, it's a bit long. I 
feel like it's not even. Is that just me? It looks like it's in the middle there, but when I do this, it feels like it's not directly in the middle. But when I'm in, when I'm unsure, that's when I do move origin. So if I do move origin and bring it out, I know it'll be in the middle. A little bit smaller. Okay. I think that looks pretty good and pretty close to what we had. All right, so for these ear parts, I think I'm just gonna kind of think they're a little big. Let's do this. Let's take this ear part and then let's um, let's just trim the back part. So if you can hit solo and kind of see where it's at, we might not have to. Let's see if we can just move it back. There we go. I just wanted them a little bit smaller. I think that looks better. So I want to join the head and the ears, the back part of the ears. So those, I'm going to bring the lower part of the ear out and just take the top part and the head. I'm going to save just in case it crashes. And I'm going to go to a voxel and I'll remesh them together high at like 450. Not that there's really that much detail in the face, actually. I probably could have done it a little bit lower, but that's okay. So now I'm just going to smooth out the ears so there's a nice blend. So they're nicely blended together. I'm not sure what that is. Oh, that's the eye. That's the eye. That's what that is. So let's tap on the eye and let's trim all of that behind because we don't need any of that. So we'll trim that down. Now we just have the front part of the eyes. All right, so, so now for the eyes, how do I want to do the eyes? Let's bring back the ground. Um, is the ground validated? It is. Okay, let me just voxel remesh the ground at like 150. We'll do it at 200. And I'll use my trusty rounded edge to just round it out some. Okay, I'd actually like to make a, a better a better floor, but that's okay. I'll do that in a different video. <laughs> so um, the eyes, so we can just make a round. We honestly could just, I know what we can do. Let's turn him into the real deal. Do I wanna, do I wanna, do we wanna bring together his head and his little body? Because we definitely could. Okay, lashes, eye dots. Okay, just gonna connect some of these things. The mouth, where's the mouth? Let's make sure we name this mouth. Otherwise, we'll forget. I'll put that under lashes. You know what, I'll put all this under head, actually. The eyes, I'm gonna leave the eyes alone for now. The ears, I'm gonna put under head. So this is the outside, of, this is that little puff, the ear puff ear puff okay eyes pineapple legs the arms okay and the ground okay good everything's in order so let's go up here and change from metcap to lit pbr and i like to I like to take everything and we don't need to do it with the eyes. 
we can uncheck the eyes. But I like to change it to white and turn the roughness up to maybe like 6.6. .6. And do paint all. Okay. So now the eyes, I'm going to change to white and glossy. It's very important to have different um, materials and textures. It really, really makes a difference for your characters. And for them to look really cool. So now that we're in the eyes, let's make a new layer. And so we have the base. This new layer will be white gloss or glass. Gloss, glass, so white gloss. So now we'll make another layer and just leave it there. It's just for funsies. And let's up the resolution. So first, let's go here, multi-res, subdivide, subdivide twice. And then we'll go to voxel and we'll voxel remesh at like 350. Okay, and I'm gonna give it a little bit of a smooth too. I'll use my rounded brush. Just give it a little bit of a smooth. So for the new plan, for these eyes, uh, for this layer, you can go to your paintbrush and clone it and do round paint or something. So just make round paint. And when you go here, go into the pencil for scaling, just bring that all the way up. For surface, that's fine. Here, go to flat. So fall off is flat and grab dynamic radius. So once you have that, you have a new circle tool. You can save it. We go to black and we want to do shiny. So we're going to take away the roughness. And now you can do this. So we'll put it in the front. We can sort of just draw our eye on like this. It's pretty good, but he still looks a little cross-eyed. That looks a little bit better. Kind of like that, but maybe they're a little too big. That looks cute. So you kind of just have to work out, you know, how you want, how big you want the eyes to be. I like that, but it looks still, they look a little bit too close. I'm very, very critical with my decisions, as you can see. Okay, I'm happy with that. Maybe we want it a little lower. Okay, I'm good with that. So now that we have that colored, let's go to the eyelash and let's color that matte black. Let's go to these and for some reason I just want to make those pink. But now what color is he? I'm not actually sure what color he is. Um, I feel like I want to make him like a... The other one I made was orange. I feel like he would be like kind of tan maybe. But that's maybe that's a little too like skin tone-ish tan. So maybe he's gray. I kind of like
like that color. That's kind of interesting. So let's make the rest of them that color. And his little arms. This will probably change. The color will probably change later on. So for pineapples, I don't even know what color a pineapple is. Is it yellow or green? I guess it's kind of yellowish green and brown. I don't even know. I'm going to go ahead and decimate the pineapple, the round part. I feel like this part would be like yellowish. And maybe this part would be sort of yellowish, but like greenish. I don't know, something like that maybe? And all these parts could be, it would be a little bit more green. So let's make them all greenish. <laughs> I think he's cute. Okay, so for the eyes, again, let's, so this can be our pupils. Let's add another one, add another layer, and call that shadow. So let's do paint. Black. And do we need to make it glossy? Mm, I guess we can make it glossy. So now we're just using our regular paint, not the circle one anymore. And we'll just draw. Let's move in a little closer and make this a little smaller. And we just want to draw like a, something like that. So that's actually going to be the shadow. So now we go to that layer and lower the opacity. And then we have a nice shadow there. Okay, and if you don't see this here, if you're wondering why I have that, that's due to the environment. And this is the environment that I'm using. Uh, this is in the links in the description. This is my own environment that I made, but you can use any of these environments. But I love this one. I always use this one. And if you want to change them or, or import your own, you just import here and then from photos. You can import the environment image. So I'm pretty happy with him. So there's a couple options that you can do now. Oh, we still have to do, we didn't color these. So for this, I think I'm gonna take the color of the skin for now and just make it darker. I tend to usually do that. And then for these, I'll take the color of the skin and go a little bit lighter. Or I can go pink and you can take the eye dots and clone, and you can turn that one into an additive. And you can paint that as well. Uh, additive, always unlit. Let's change the color of both of them to maybe something like that. Okay. I think that's looking good. This needs to be a different color pink. Yeah, there we go, that color pink. Okay, I'm liking it. So there's a few options that you can do now. I'm gonna go back into perspective. Uh, if you have, if you did the tutorial where I made the backdrop, you can go ahead and add that in. So let's just save this. And if you want to add that in, just go here, uh, add to scene, and then just find wherever you saved your backdrop, like backdrop two, check it and then open. And then you have your backdrop there. So let's turn the environment off. 
and I'm just gonna, you can bring all of this stuff. Hopefully everything is selected, yeah. And then you would just have to bring everything up into that space and get rid of this. And then you could relight uh, as you as you need. So that's one way to do it. Obviously it looks a little bit different with post-process and all that fun stuff. We'll turn the environment on, but low, but a lot lower. You know, something cool like this. So you just have to ingest your lights as you want. But if you don't want to do that, I'll show you a quick way to just do lighting. So we'll just, we'll just undo. We'll make this a little bigger. And let's get rid of this image. Let's paint that. Well, I'm going to paint it a different color. We'll make it kind of a warm gray. So turn off the environment. Whoops. Turn off the environment and add one light. I usually like to boost this light. Maybe 1.75. And then we'll add, and you can keep it like that or you can change it to a spotlight, but we'll just do a quick and dirty. Let's add another light. I'm going to bring this over just so we don't get it confused. So for now for this other light, I'm going to spin it around so that it's sort of lighting up the other side like this. But I'm gonna tap on this little, oops, let's bring the eye, light icons back. So I'm gonna tap on this light, tap this and turn it down. And I'll hit softness. And then let's add an, a light overhead Spotlight. We'll just move that into place. So maybe something like that. We'll make it a little bit lighter. And then for the last light, sorry, I know it's getting loud. My apologies. We'll add a spotlight and we'll add that behind. But you want to point the light at his back. Like this. So something like that. We'll turn this one up high. Give us a nice edge. And now let's bring back the environment just a little bit to sort of make this a little brighter. I think that's okay. We still get a nice glare in the eyes. And I wonder if I can up the reflectance. I can. I can up the reflectance on the eyes. So now let's take the head, the legs, um, let's see, anything else? The ear puffs. The arms. Okay, I think that's everything. So let's go here and change them to subsurface. And we're gonna bring it down a little bit. To maybe 1.5 or so. And we can do the same thing with the pineapple. So we'll tap the pineapple subsurface, we'll bring that down some. We'll do the same thing with all the stems, which we can probably join the stems together. Where are they? Oh, here they are. 
But for now, we'll just make them subsurface. Okay, it's already subsurface. Good. I can make the background a little bit darker. Okay. Or we can make, just make the background a different color too. There we go. I kind of like that. Let's see what happens if we make this shiny. Okay, that looks good. Let's change some of these shadows, last but not least. I think the shadows usually look better when they're soft. I think that looks good. All right, so I think that's that. Pretty happy with him. Sometimes you can maneuver this edge light to sort of bring out that, um, this. Up the intensity a little bit. Okay, I think it looks good. All right. Well, let me know what you think. But I'm happy with him. Go ahead and view. Of course, it won't go away. So let's go ahead and do post process so we'll get a better look really bright in post-process. Let's figure out what the culprit is. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's bloom. Bloom is really high. I want to make the top down a little darker. Well, you can see that nice glow. So I always go through and I kind of adjust my lights a little bit too. All right. Keep drawing, keep sculpting. I'll see you all.